On this episode of the Roundtable Podcast, we are on the clock. <laughs> so we go the, the 2023 draft of Q&A questions. Danny, it was pretty good. Yeah, we go everywhere from relationships, investing, arm training, favorite subs. It's all over the board. It's Great. awesome. Try it. Um, it was just great to be back, having a, like a new episode where it's just us four again. Like we've been like sandwiched with like guest episodes and our own episodes and everything. So it's just great to come back and like connect and everything again. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, this is an amazing episode. Uh, I'm very excited that we did the first ever 2023 uh, roundtable draft <laughs> Q and A session. <laughs> great idea, Cole. I Round do off. like uh, episodes like this for exactly what Trayvon just said. And I think that there's so many nuggets of value around life in this episode and arm size that it will contribute to everyone's life. Let's go to the show. Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com and Manscaped. Shout out Manscaped. Uh, yeah. What's the code, Danny? Small Arms with a Z. And what do they get? <laughs> what did they get? They get 20% off and free shipping. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. It's pretty wet. Banger. Not yeah, lie. I mean, Danny literally said it was so wet that uh, he got the thing wet while he was in the oh. shower and he yeah. still liked it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Shout yeah. out Lawnmower 4.0. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. Um, and Sam Adams, actually, they uh, messaged me yesterday and asked me if we needed more beer. Haven't answered back yet, but I'm thinking... Probably. Uh, I think you know yeah, the answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do. I think that I think I know the answer to that. All right, so uh, we're back uh, live episode like weekly. Basically, we're back on track because we had all those episodes from the Arnold. Uh, Cole had a good idea about doing some Q and A. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. So I'm gonna let you take it away. What, what's yeah, what's well, the plan here? First Cole? off, I just want to address that you know it's been a while since we gave a real update, and it has. I think uh, you know personally there's been a lot of stuff going on. Talk in, to in us, all Cole. Of our lives. Talk but to I us. I think the biggest thing is is that literally week by week, day by day, the arms army is growing. And for those of you watching right now, <laughs> me and Danny are unveiling our new like professional legit hoodies that we got custom made that's like stormtrooper reebok inspired <laughs> they are stormtrooper yeah. reebok inspired that's right. <laughs> yeah like, wow. to put it. couldn't have put it any better yeah yeah and so uh me and danny have been making a lot of content lately i don't know if you're if you're not subscribed to the arms army i don't know you what you're to. doing you're probably small yeah. you're probably yeah. missing out on gains yeah, yeah. So, up. yeah. Danny's on that and i think like the the cat the supersets that we've done that you'll see on the max effort superset of the week <laughs> they are must watch Talk about the tri set though on this get stacked because you're beside yourself this morning. Yes, yeah, this <laughs> honestly like it was. in so you know I like I take mental notes of like my favorite workouts of all time. Yes, you do. And my number one workout that is the go to for chest and back Jack is and the cheese. Get stacked thirty seven Jack and T Jack and cheese Saturday nineteen seventies workout. Okay, I don't know what it is, but those <laughs> but super sets fucking... always hit. And that's like if like I'm down in the dumps and I need to just get a pump. Yes. I'm going to that one. I love well, it. Well, now I'm adding number two in the arsenal, which would be this get stacks. Summer uh, Swole 105 or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, number yeah. 105, Summer Swole 2, Friday arm workout. It it's, is one of the nastiest pumps I've ever had in my life. It's almost like excruciating. It's just literally you do one set and you're like, I think I've had enough, basically. <laughs> Bobby looked at me. He's like, he got this from you. He's like, I'm pumped out. I Pum literally am pumped out. <laughs> Well, and like, dude, my biceps. So it starts out with the tricep for the biceps. Then the next thing is you're is you're supposed to do like a uh, tricep superset, and it starts off with skull crushers. I couldn't even do them. Like Your my arms biceps are so were so ballooned up, I could not go all the way down. I couldn't even feel it my triceps. <laughs> it was insane. Well, now that we're on the subject of arm workouts or arm training, what what are some of your favorite like? You know, whether it's a workout or if it's like a method, like what what's on the docket for you right now, dude? I think uh, back to real quick what Cole said is the combination of going a two high rep things in a row and then going to the heavy, which is one of my favorite things, which is the incline curls with the twist, the mm -hmm. eight yeah, twist. Yeah. It's like I think that's why that feels so crazy. Yeah, so I yeah. think I'm finding out some combos right now that are going to be intermixed and new get stacks that are you like literally can't put any more blood in your fucking biceps <laughs> i can't wait till i get a little leaner i'm gonna look like a fucking unbelievably like jacked maniac yeah 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 <laughs> it's pretty me i mean we, I, we need to put like hercules like u.s hercules on a cover or something That'd be dude i was literally nice. looking at my bicep just telling it to like literally fucking grow like i'm looking at that vein i'm going just fucking pump the blood in there <laughs> Yeah, pretty amazing. All right, uh, life. Give us a life update, Cole. 
You well, got a lot I, of shit I, going I on. Think, Is that what I, we're going? I, well, I think this, uh, this, these Q and A's will um, like hit it. I think okay. We'll, I think right. we'll hit on it. So okay. yeah. So let's start it. Uh, also, I want to do this Q and A is because at the time of recording this. The first, the first round of the draft was last night. Yes. So this Q and A is the official roundtable uh, Q and A draft session. I like that. So uh, fuck yeah, there's our. Title. I'm officially on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On the clock is the pick in. Yeah, the pick is in. Uh, with the number one pick in the roundtable Q and A draft, I select Gilly underscore Junior. He says, <laughs> "Your elevator pitch when trying to introduce your business services." to a potential new client. So let's Ooh. start there. So what is your thoughts, Mr. Gregory? So like, I guess for me, it would be my elevator pitch of why somebody should be a client of either Corgi Fitness or Max. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, potentially. Yeah. yeah. Or just like, how, how would you structure that? How do you come up with that? Oh, just, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in just in general. Just in general. <clears throat> um, That's an interesting, I'm trying to think like what, how, cause I haven't, because the thing is, like an elevator pitch when the the concept isn't proven yet is a, is I guess a true elevator pitch, right? Not like when you're doing you're bringing in people when sh- shit's already proven to work. Yeah. So the last time, so I haven't created I guess a new situation like that in a mm-hmm. while. Mm-hmm. But I think that a lot of times when I was doing that, I would lean mostly because this is my game on the pra- practitionership. So my elevator pitch would be, I'm, I know this has value, whatever this business is because of X, which would be years in the game, tested and proven, seen it on others. Like mine has always been based around that type of stuff. Because if you're looking at somebody and you're like, I've been training for five years, I've been doing this, I've got these results. And now I want to open my gym so I can do this for other people. And you're showing them your before and after the methods that you do the kind like, that's how I've always won because mm-hmm. people want that are, that are giving you money, want to believe that you're going to be there tomorrow mm-hmm. that you know what you're doing. So for instance, like with you guys, when I, when I started working with varsity creative, right? Like I know how you guys operate because we've been doing it for so long. So my, room for error or risk is low because I know Trey's going to be at work tomorrow and he's going to be working on his projects. Cole's going to be at work tomorrow. He's going to be working on his projects. And whether it takes us one month or 10 years, I know we're going to get whatever our goal is. Right? So I think when you're trying to elevator pitch somebody, you've got to find a way to show your value and worth more in that you're like willing to like be there ups, down, sideways, they want to invest in the person and the concept. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I always win, not always, but most of the time I win them on that first part. And so even if they don't love the concept, they love Corey. And so they believe in Corey. And so if I can believe in Cole, Trey, and Danny, I'm more apt to believe in your elevator pitch because every fucking VC guy will tell you they usually are investing in the fucking, in the actual entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. So how do you get that across that? That is, that is my thought process of when I've got people that do stuff with me. So yeah, <clears throat> me. All right. Are we still talking about this? One? <laughs> sure. Do you have anything? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, well, you've just pitched your services. Uh, yeah. I mean, lately, so yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, the only thing I would really add aside from like the experience and then like, I mean, the portfolio of work that you've accumulated yeah. up to this point, really like leaning into that. You just talked about this yesterday. Mm-hmm. You said, I'm going to put together what it looks like, how often it should be like, right? So it's like, they don't yeah. have any guessing. Yeah. So like, yeah, just eliminating as many obstacles or doubts in their head as possible. Yeah. And then even if you have to like, as like a wild card in your back pocket, if you have to pull it is to like potentially pitch like a, uh, like a trial based period. So, mm-hmm. so it's like, it looks like you are more so having to like prove yourself to earn your keep, to keep you going. Um, and that's worked well for me up to this point. So that's the only thing they I keep remember. saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Cause yeah. Cause then it's just up to you to not fuck up Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> yeah, like or it. to produce Trim Trim on. Or anything. Um, yeah. So like, I guess like with, with like my Twitter, for example, um, and like working on the NFT project and like working on that, like event that we're working on throwing for NFTs too. Like what I've been doing is I always just like cold DM like a bunch of people. So like, that's like one of my things that I do like every day is I try to like cold DM like a certain amount of people. Smart. So it's always like someone that I just have never DM before that I've like 
said something to on the timeline or something mm-hmm. like that and just sending them a message and being like hey like we've interacted a good amount before like but we've never like connected like in a dm so like you know like hey what's up basically creating a relationship exactly yeah, yeah. and so I, that's what i've been doing is just consistently dming people like over and over and over and i mean as you've seen i've grown my twitter a whole bunch and everything so like basically just like forming all those connections and everything so then you know when we do have a product or an event to throw or something like that then like there's an audience people are going to go like this how's Trey know everybody <laughs> i'm telling you because yeah. i because i've had this happen to me before it's because you consistently are making those small interactions mm-hmm. which are also small wins that are gonna you know pile up because you just do it every day because you're a consistent guy right which is why i want to be involved with you guys and then it's like all of a sudden one day it turns over because you are having your event and you literally know everybody yeah that's how i want it to be yeah. mm-hmm. well that's exactly what's happening <laughs> yeah and so that's uh awesome <laughs> <laughs> the Good. i guess the few things i would add is like making a pitch and just talking about what you offer is way easier whenever you have the experience you know exactly like you've practiced you know what your go-to's are what Mm -hmm. you're good at what you're not good at all this stuff and like think about what what is every question that someone would ask to not work with me and have an answer to that to basically Mm -hmm. back it up whether it's like supporting facts uh history or Mm -hmm. anything like that and then what was the other one the other one was uh I don't know, but that like that's what I would add. I, I always I've done in the past too. I've said like of certain mistakes I've made, I wouldn't remake too. Some people like to hear that because they're mm-hmm. like, "Oh, this dude already been through this, learned that, won't replay this." Like there, I think there's a humble like value in that when because a lot of people want to look like they have all the answers all the time, right? Sometimes the answer is I got the answer because I fucked it up the first time. And I honestly think people like, like that, like the honesty yeah. and transparency. I think so yeah. because you know, when it, it's real easy to say like, yo, well, I'm just not redoing that because of this situation and I learned, so that'll help contribute to this project to be more successful. Mm-hmm. And so I think like that, obviously I've been in the game a, a lot longer than you guys, but that, that's definitely, that definitely helped me a couple yeah. of times. Mm-hmm. I was going to add, like, don't pitch it, pitch it to people who you think you want to work with, like good potential clients. Just don't, don't go around and pitch it to everyone. Cause if you end up working with someone who doesn't really care, we have to offer, it's just going to be a messy relationship from the beginning. Yeah, for sure. So I was going, all right. Or how do we go? How do we go next? Uh, uh, I guess you'll just choose pick number two. Or am I on the clock? <laughs> yeah, you're on the clock. Uh, okay, can you hit the music again? Yeah, here I will. <laughs> okay. Uh, with the second pick of the uh, <laughs> of the 2023 roundtable draft uh, Q and A, um, I'm gonna pick C J Stroud. No, oh, hold on, I'm wrong. Okay, he should have won number one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He yeah. should have won number one. Did you change? Are you now not a Carolina fan anymore? Or are you staying? <laughs> well, th- well, there's a question about that. You just want to go to that question? Yeah, sure. Is there a question about there that? There is a question. Yeah, here, let me uh, read it out. All right. So with the second pick in the 2023 roundtable Q&A. It is actually from one of my buddies from high school, Mr. Jacob Galloway, who's a huge Steeler fan. He wants to know, is the Cole Susak converting to a Pittsburgh Steeler fan <laughs> yours truly, Galloway? So uh, so I'm currently a Pittsburgh fan. Yeah. And I've told everyone I know, especially my immediate family that are Browns fans, that it's okay to like just be done with a losing team <laughs> and that we will take you in because you have an actual like reason now. Yeah. And that, you know, you have currently signed up. Now, when the Cam Newton was there, they won some games. But 100%. from a Brown standpoint, you've signed up to be a loser basically your entire life. And I would say, why would you sign up? I told my daughter that. Yeah. Why are you signing up for this life of, like, like continued losing, lots of massage parlors? I, I don't understand why you would sign up for that. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, so just to set the background, I've been a Panthers fan since I was in high school. I grew up having a loose relationship with the Steelers. I liked them when they won the Super Bowl, I think, in 05 with the yep. bus and stuff like that. But growing up, I didn't really have a connection with them. So in high school, I chose to root for the Panthers, one, because they have awesome uniform colors, some of the best in the league. They had Luke Kuechly, Luke Cam Keekly. Newton, yeah. who I loved. So I watched them. I just said, I, I will be a fan of this. And now, you know, watching them convert and stuff like that, over the past few years, losing Cam and basically having a shitty team for like the last few years, I said if they if they don't take C.J. Stroud, who I believe is a I believe will succeed in the NFL. Hundred um, percent. He's an NFL. If they didn't take him number one, then I'm officially dropping my fan status, and yeah. I have. 
So yeah. currently I'm a fan free agent. Uh, the one thing I will say is I'm, I'm open to any team. I just really want to see what they have to offer. I've been consulting with a lot of, you know, huge fans of teams <laughs> talking to their culture, you know, and all this stuff. But I will say is that I'm not going to the Browns. I'm anti Browns. Yeah. My roommates <clears throat> in college were Browns fans. And honestly, watching them just be miserable. Why would it, you, why honestly, would you sign up for that? Yeah. Honestly, it was like, Basically, every Michigan fan for like the last like <laughs> 20 years, my entire lifetime, they've just been miserable. I can't imagine going through high school, middle school, all that stuff, losing every year. I just can't do that to think myself. About, think I about don't this. pay myself enough. If you come to the Steelers, which I would say you're probably projected to because you're from the Valley, yeah, is you're not coming into a Super Bowl team. You're coming into a rebuilding Steelers team. Mm. So you could really be on the upswing here, Cole. This is like <laughs> a stock you know that's going to go up. George Pickens, Kenny Pickett, like, and if you would go to Pittsburgh, jump on the ferry, drink yeah. an Iron City beer across mm. the fucking river, get dropped off in front, and go experience you Heinz get Field. Some Bros. Get some Permani mm. Brothers. Yeah, you're a fuck. It's a wrap. Bro. So I will say on my I'll, list, I'll, I'll contribute one terrible towel to you if you would like. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Have an I extra one. <laughs> yes, I uh, see the terrible towel in that. Like the fans, I think I could get in there. It's um, cool. I think this year, you know, I think I might just keep my eyes open. I might be sure. like a little tossing around because my top three that I'm trying to think about is the Steelers, obviously close the Valley. Yeah. Got a lot of ties there. Also, though, just down the road uh, is Cincinnati. That's true, Joey With Burrow. Joe Burrow, the Sun Four kid. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, it's true. You know, me being a Sun Four guy, the whole I like me and Joe are like based on the same level. Like, mm. I think I might root Obviously. for him. Yeah, uh, that's my true. My other one was, you know, honestly, like I got a lot of Philly ties too, and they're yeah. bringing back those Kelly Green uniforms, which I love. Big uniform guys, so and that's up there, you would look the most bandwagon as a as an Eagles fan right now, just because they're the best team. Probably. See, but. I, but I have like deep ties with them because Sklar, shout out Sklar, Sklar yeah. whenever the Eagles won the Super Bowl then, dude, that entire season, I was like riding with them. Yeah, yeah. So I got some ties there. Philly's not yeah. too far away. Can go the there. Cincinnati one's an interesting one because they should win a Super Bowl there. But will they? Because will they have enough around them? Well, I mean, the AFC. St oh, my other one is also the Jets, Aaron Rodgers. I kind of fuck with yeah. the Jets. Why did they not take Jackson Smith? They had him. They could have taken him. He would have had fucking Jackson Smith and fucking Garrett Wilson. I, I mean, just that got, made so much sense. I don't know who they took, but they got a lot of weapons though already. Yeah, that's true. They need. They probably need a line for Rodgers because I mean, being like forty four, takes one hit, you might be done. There goes one hundred thirty five million dollars or whatever they spend it on. <laughs> that's the greasiest fucking hair. One hundred thirty million of oh, all time. He, I think he cut his hair actually. Oh, did he? Yeah, he cut his hair. Oh, okay. He has. I think he's got short hair now. He's a new yeah. man in New York. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> does not give a at fuck at all. But, <laughs> Mark um, Jackson got paid though. He right. did, and he needed to get paid. Good for him, bro. Yeah. Um, right. Also, just so you guys know, in the in the group chat, I'm going off the first picture. That's what I've been going off of. Oh, okay. So okay. That's where we're at. <laughs> Sounds but, good. All right, Danny, uh, so. you're pick number three. All right. Wait. So where am I on this? I'm <laughs> I'm lost now. I'm on the, I'm on well, this draft. Picture. You can just pick. Well, yeah, yeah you can. Yeah, pick just any of those. I'm just telling you that's where I was. Any of the ones that are in yeah. there. All right. Uh, I kind I kind of want to go to the uh, the worst best lunch session. Shout yeah, out Evan I like Gold. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, What's up, Evan? Yeah. What up, dog? Um, I mean, I definitely got to go with one of the mile sessions for the worst for ones sure. for sure. Um, it probably was my first mile at Grandview. And that first time you do the mile. The first time you, the first time you do the mile is punches like, you in the throat. Yeah, like the first lap always sucks because you're not really fully warmed up. And then, yeah. like, the second and third lap are kind of juicy. But then that fourth lap is just, like, a barefoot to the nutsack. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's true. exactly what it is. Because then, I mean, you, you want to stop. And, like, you also want to be a little bitch and start, you know, putting your feet together you're, versus going. You're also wondering why are you doing this Yeah, and then you're like, <laughs> why is this happening? Yeah. I just remember being wrecked for, like, probably, like, five days after yeah, that. Yeah, I was a wreck for Because, like, I was actually trying to do a decent time. I think I was trying to go, like, under 45 or something like that. Cool, before, you done a mile before? first time? No. I would say you my, had... Yeah. Before the whole mile thing got, like, started, and, like, that was a cool thing to do, uh, <laughs> my, my, my hips were already shot. You are already shot. My, my, my shit's already fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I would say that, or back in the day when I had a... Um, I had a lunge streak, but it was... Mine was 30 minutes. Yeah, I remember that. Regardless or whatever. And every week I would do... Um, a 30 minute lunch session all with my rock on mm. with a, 
a 30 or 45 pound ruck, but the entire time. And it was fucking terrible. That was terrible. So there's a, there's a couple like random little hills in Grandview and I was, I'd be going like up the one hill and then back down just over and over again. So that those are probably the two worst lunch sessions for me. The best one, I guess, would probably be – I'm trying to remember what the time was, but it's probably like one of my best like 800 or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I can't so. even tell you what the time was. It was it was less than 15 minutes for sure, though. That's fast. True. Yeah. Um, my best lunch session, uh, probably like my 800 meter, like just straight up with no weight. Um, I think if I remember correctly, it's like 13.01 or something like that. So fast. Flying. Um, <laughs> A.K.A. Trey Speed. Uh, worst lunch session. Um, probably, I would say like probably the, t- the f- like the first time and also the only time I ever did a mile weighted. Oh, so bad. Because <laughs> I don't remember the exact weight I did with that. I think mm. it was like twenty or twenty five pounds. But I remember though, like it being more weight than I thought I was going to use for it. <laughs> yeah. you, know, like, you know what I mean? Like, I remember yeah. it being like an extra like 10 pounds or so more than I thought it yeah. was. And it felt like a million more pounds probably. Yeah, yeah. and like, yeah, like weighted lunges for a mile. Like by the time you get to the second lap, yeah, every fucked. single rep feels like a max out lunge with like 400 so, pounds on your back. So bad. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, my best one is, um, well, my best little block is I did a mile six days in a row one time. And I was so tight, I remember I didn't even get loose till the second lap on every day. Mm-hmm. And it actually like helped me like it helped me like just loosen up. It was I was kind of injured before that, whatever. But I did a 707 400 whenever Dennison was practicing one morning and had the music up. So it was like dark outside. The whole football team was practicing, but the lights were on at the field. Hyped this and I just got fucking rolling. And it was just one of those days, and I almost I feel like I almost died after. And then um, <laughs> my worst one was when I tried to do a mile with eighty pounds. Yeah. I knew you were going to say that. I made one, it. Yeah. I made it three laps, and it was exactly what Trey just said. So I made it a mile with forty pounds before, and I used to do eight hundred with forty pounds. Actually, I got down to one sixty five that way, which was crazy. But I was doing a mile, or I was doing eight hundred forty pounds every day, and then one hundred sixty five pounds. Yeah, because I competed at 165 in a bodybuilding show. Did you Did you look sickly at yeah. that weight? That's that <laughs> original lower Seriously. back picture. Damn, I've posted a million times where my shit looks crazy. Yeah, it stop. was like two weeks before that. Um, anyway, so yeah, I looked way too thin. If I would have carved up right, like if I knew more of what I know now, I would look like an absolute freak show. Because <laughs> I was because so, I, I could see my glutes on the side. I basically look like a way smaller version of like Tyler Galbraith. I think like I was that lean, you know, my legs look crazy anyway. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, but that I gave in on the third, at the end of the third lap on the 80 pounds, I felt like every step I was maxing out. I haven't been broken like that in a while. Like I was literally like talking shit to myself every step on the third lap. And I kept thinking like, I know you can make it a fucking mile. But it was so fucking heavy. When did it start? When did that the doubt start in your head? You're like the start of the third lap because I made it. 80 oh, pounds. That, I, I made it eighty pounds for eight hundred, and it wasn't like easy. But I was like, all right. And then I hit a wall, starting the third, and I was just a little hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I was a, such a little hoe. I'm trying to talk shit to ho. myself. Yeah. I was a lunge hoe. <laughs> I was trying to fucking get through it. I wanted to get a mile because now for the rest of my life, I got to tell this story. Of when you did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a little bitch hoe. Which, is, which still is ridiculous. Three yeah. laps with 80 yeah. pounds. And so. I was light. I was like 170. So yeah, it was like. for that frame. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I was dying. Cole, what's your best lunch um, session? I just want to be like very truthful and honest that I would say every lunch session is the worst lunch session <laughs> for you. It is just 1 million percent. I, what I will say is though, um, I well, let's go to my best. I think like my best was probably in like 2018. I was like getting pretty like lean and like diced. I I still think the fastest I did it was like, it was like a sub like 17. It yep. was like 16 minutes or That's something fast, like that. bro. Like I was like, I was like cooking. That's whenever I was like, really good at it right after that it's probably whenever my hips fucking basically went out you were like a buck 85 which is oh, crazy yeah. to even think about yeah um yeah but i knew it was gonna be 220 at some point yeah of but course. uh all, i will say lunges neck. lunges lately have been feeling better ever since i've been going getting worked on i saw you do a little bit this morning yeah 10 minutes and then 10 minutes on a stairmaster uh 
yesterday or yesterday or two days ago i did 6.9 minutes six minutes and nine seconds uh walking and then six minutes and nine uh, board press lunges it was awesome yeah i need to get so right now i'm out of doing lunges which sounds really weird but i'm working to get back into them i was trying to get my hip flexors kind of squared away had a pretty good uh off and on streak for about a decade mm -hmm. so just been yeah. kind of chilling on that um but my plan is is to continue so this morning i did 50 minutes on the incline uh with three pound ankle weights walking at like three to three point two i did 10 minutes of dead mill after and then five minutes of jump rope because mm. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get my like calves back for jumping. A little boxing training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look pretty fucking sexy. <laughs> so I was doing that. Subtle. <laughs> but my plan is is to still continue the hill walking, and this is going to shock some people. Partly because of actual cardio cardiovascular health. I do have heart heart history issues in my on my Italian side, but none of those people took care of themselves like I do. Mm. So that's that's with a grain of salt, right? But I will tell you, even though I've always had good cholesterol, like all my stuff's always been in line, but I'm intrigued because I haven't trained like this in so many years that if I do a conditioning piece like this, that's traditional essentially, and then add the lunges after it, which I know sounds like a lot, but my plan is to alternate some sprint work so I can beat Anon in a race. Lunges. Can we make some, a big deal about this? Yeah. Yeah, we, I'm gonna bet. Can, can we like literally we video it and everything? Yeah. I'm gonna bet him a hundred dollars. Please do. Can we like set? Can we like set up an ESPN desk and like a yeah, hundred percent? Yes. Oh god. Yeah. Yes. This yeah. Because he keeps talking so much shit, <laughs> and yes. I'm just keep getting lighter and faster, and I can feel it. Like I'm just I'm gonna surprise the shit out of him. Just don't even if he still beats me, then I just got nothing. It's just what it is. But he keeps getting he's getting bigger right now too. So I'm starting to get a little nervous. You but get nervous? I think. <laughs> Cause he, and he runs way more now because he's playing lacrosse. Yeah. So he's yeah. in good shape right now. So I'm going to have to be ready. But yeah. Okay. Yo, what I will Get say. Time the, for off season. Yes. There is, <laughs> but what, what I will say about the lunges is there's nothing that even compares to it. Even just like the 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. like Correct. So much fucking better than anything else. I, so yeah. that's the thing, Cole, that I, I really like about. So back to what I was saying is. I want to get to where I can still do probably like 45 minutes on the incline and then do like a 400 after. Mm -hmm. If I can do that, I'm going to be fucking yeah. like ridiculous, right? And so, or alternate like one day of 400, one day some bot, like some jump rope, one day some sprints, like kind of fuck around. Yeah. Just to, honestly, just to create some, some new protocols and I'll tell you why. I just know the amount of people that can actually do what we do is not a lot. And I need to create some other things that are still difficult, but people can do. So I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit open, more minded to it. But for me, there's yeah. nothing that compares strength, the way I look, the way my metabolism feels. It is by far for the time involved, mm -hmm. the goat of fucking conditioning, metabolic work. One million percent. Yeah. If you want maybe sprinting, maybe sprinting mm -hmm. yeah. is close. <laughs> But I would just say people, as they get older, they, they're going to have a harder time sprinting and keeping that up. Then I mean, yeah. Trey is a fucking sprinter in college. Like at 45, the sprint workouts that work when you're 20 yeah. is not the same as you going to lunch 20 minutes. Yeah. It just, Lunges is way better. Exactly. And because yeah. you've done both at a high level. Yeah, so you way get better. it. So that he's the perfect person to talk about. But do you think the way you look when you're like in shape like that and the way you can look when you're in shape with lunges, to me, my body looked the closest with those two. Similar, though. similar, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because I like definitely like looked my best though than when I was doing lunge work and when I was also like sprinting though. For yeah, track. together it's a wrap. Together, yeah. Because uh, I did that a couple times this week, and I I could feel, and I'm just doing ten seconds on, ten seconds off on the treadmill. I'm not doing like sprint hundred, walk the fucking corners. Like I'm not doing. Like don't get it twisted. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm really, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really saying anyone want to yeah. come to that. Yeah, yeah, not yet. So, <laughs> not okay. Yet. All right. What's but next? Eventually then. Yeah, yeah, right. maybe. Uh, Trayvon is now on the clock. I might need run training so I can beat him. Yes, you can beat him. That would be hilarious. Um, I like this question from uh, Vic Moyo. What's the view on growing as a brand? Um, I'm assuming that they're just talking about like growing like as like – not only like a personal brand, but also like as a business brand. So like we could sure. just talk about like the importance of growing like Love it. as a brand that like people can recognize and everything. Sure. Go ahead, Trey. Um, I just, yeah. So like, <laughs> um, like growing as a brand, I think like that's like just super important. Like obviously like my Twitter. So like how I was saying like with my Twitter, like mm -hmm. growing my, like 
growing my personal brands, like me, myself, like growing like my name, like Trayvon and everything like that, like growing that brand is like super important just because then down the line, like I was saying, then when you do have a business to present or something or an idea or anything like that, like you already have like the built trust and of people that have followed you for years. Built and trust. Yeah. Huge. You mean like have been involved with you for years, know how you operate and everything like that. And it's way easier for them than to like hand you their money. Think about this, Trey. You guys have watched that basically the entire time you've been grown ups because of the trust of these people that are been inside of my brand. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. is now extension to your guys. And then now it's like you're replaying the same in just a different vertical. It's all, it always works the same way. People know, like, and trust you. They're going to then, they're more apt to support what you do. And then what happens is when that becomes, this is just my, what that becomes the baseline. They interact with you. They support you. They see your product. They like your experience. They are going to go somewhere else at some point. It just, it happens a lot, but then they see, Oh wait, this is even, it's a grass greener thing. Let me go try this other protein. First off, that protein company don't fucking give two shits about you. They don't have any interactive stuff. They don't have personalities that are like real people most of the time. And it isn't as good as a product. And then they go, what the fuck didn't I? You know, they like it. So it's like you can do such a good job at that to where then you keep these people forever because they're going to go other places. They're not going to get it. Mm-hmm. There are the other NFT project doesn't really care if they message them or not, or they don't really get to know them or then see them at it. Like there's so many intangibles of the long game. If you stick to this, that it's going to just keep paying, bro. Like I've seen the same people's names on these boxes that are coming through this office forever. I've seen them at the Arnold. I see him here. I just had a call guy the other day cause he got, uh, he had a membership problem and I, it has been like two weeks first thing he said was I listened to every business and bicep episode twice at least yeah. he's like I've bought muscle farm products and he was having an issue mm-hmm. so like his emails were kind of shitty I'm not gonna lie so when I called I wasn't really sure what I was gonna get and he was kind of like almost being mean to my mom which is also a fucking but I think I was reading into his email anyway but the amount of support in long game mm-hmm. in touch points was unbelievable but it all started by some content, some interaction. And then 10 years later, I'm calling the guy to handle an issue. And it was like, just hearing what he said to me, I was like, this is why we do all it actually impacted his life. And he even said like, I don't buy your stuff all the time, but you know, I bought some amino coffee not that long ago, which (laughs) tells (laughs) me it's been a little while ago, but either way, it was just like uh, a funny interaction and people don't realize that that just builds for so long. And so that's your guys' norm, essentially, because that's how we operate here. And you guys now are doing the exact same thing. You're going to wake up at 30, and it's there's going to be so many people that have interacted with you guys positively and whatever that you're building. And then the rest of the people that know you guys are going to be like, "Yeah, how'd that happen? <clears throat> well, what, I mean, it's like, it's just, it's just seeing through the trees for a long... It's an everyday, the everyday thing, like, oh my gosh, the... It just, it's so valuable. People yeah. are just, they just don't Cause understand I it. would say the easiest way to grow like your brand is to like grow, like how you operate. Yeah. Like your and what you're into, what you're into and do that over time. Because like one of my favorite quotes, I think it was, uh, I think it was Bezos that said this, said your brand is what, pe- like what people say about you whenever you're not in the room yeah. that can go for if you're selling a product yeah. or if you're doing a personal service, like, like what is the experience that people are getting with you? Mm-hmm. Are they getting a whole different person every time they talk to you mm-hmm. or do they trust and know you that if I need something, Oh, I know Trey can get it to me super quick yep. and I know it's going to be good. And even if it's not what I like, I know Trey will tell me exactly what he was thinking and make sure I get something yeah. I do like, you know what I mean? And like, I would say like, like you don't need like a million real, like clients and like relationship stuff like that. Like the easiest oh. way to grow your brand is to like service the people who already fuck with you. Yes. Like continue to nurture those relationships and make sure all those are good because the second someone is talking to them and they need help, who's going to be the first person that they're going to refer? It's at, going to be you. At the end of the day, we can have a million social media channels and they all help. Word of mouth is still one of the highest value like referral sources for business. Yeah. It just is what it is. People take the protein. People do the workouts. They tell their friends. People like have a good experience with Trayvon. They buy one of the NFTs. They're going to tell their other friends that buy NFTs. 
people see your graphics on Braxton's thing. What's another athlete's going to holler Braxton? Oh, well, that's Cole. Yeah. And by the way, I get stuff quick and it's dope. like, and like how you keep those relationships is to just always keep in touch with them, make sure they're good on everything. Yep. Um, you know, we always try to make things personal, like write them a note, fucking give them a call, like do something that's just show them that like you're, you still care. Basically. I got a message, uh, yesterday on the first block of the busy diet stuff. I was able to give uh, books and I would write each person's name. Thanks for trying Mac, especially when I knew they were new. Right. And, um, somebody messaged me yesterday and said, Hey, for as busy as my, for as busy as I perceive you to be, he's like, the fact that you wrote me a personal note is class. Like basically, so now what's the experience up against any other sub? It's going to be real hard to take him from me. You know what I mean? To yeah. supplement wise. And so it's like, you remember those things, <clears throat> like they're so valuable, man. Yeah. So. And honestly, like one thing after like doing the ton of the boom cast mm -hmm. is hearing all those players talk about like Trestle and how he remembers everything knows what's going I on. I want to get better at that. I, like I'm trying to get better at that. Yeah. But honestly, like I think I already kind of have that. Like if I talk to someone, even has it been a while, mm -hmm. I know exactly what's been going on with him. I always try to keep in touch with everyone. Yeah. That's uh, an elite skill that Trestle either like had worked like that if we when we get a chance to interview him yeah that's gonna be one of my major things honestly I like more about yeah I, I i bet a lot of it's instinctual but i bet he's i bet he sort of noticed the importance of it and sort of like writing notes it's in 100 percent. it's instinctual and now it's one of his intangibles yep of why they fuck with him so much it's it's unbelievable actually what yeah. Danny? That's good. well you guys have checked pretty much every box yeah there's a lot of good dialogue this point. Yeah. but i mean the only thing i could really add or the way that i think about like my personal brand or whatever aside from being the small arms <laughs> yeah having big arms obviously but <laughs> Yo, hold on, hold on, uh, sign note on that whenever whenever, whenever Corey had the columbus state uh kids come through yeah and <laughs> Corey, Corey introduced me i was filling up my water and he got on the spot he goes cold do you have any words for him to say and i just said uh, well, I mean, the bigger your arms, like just keep doing arms because the bigger your arms, the better your business is going to be. It's just directly correlated. So. <laughs> he just filled his water and then left. <laughs> <laughs> what a line. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess from, you know, being consistent uh, and then just kind of like living and breathing like what you're what you're doing. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you, I mean, you could read it from a mile away obviously the the gift giving thing is actually interesting in those like touch points that's something i take really really seriously um he does like like trestle takes it, that's how he does the gift giving it's it's impressive mm -hmm. Just, I've well like a few i try to like be like the fly in the wall to observe and like like what well i did it with like yoles too like yeah, you yeah. know what i mean because like there's like little like picking up on little things and like what they what they actually truly like not just some like surface level shit yep. but like just to actually show that you care and that you actually want to work like i do it with like people that i want to work with right yeah so like you know coach deegan is another prime example so like i <laughs> it's not it sounds funny and kind of ridiculous some uh, to some extent but like with him he's like he's a good writer he's a thinker he's a fucking you know elite coach mm -hmm. and you know consultant or whatever so like with him, I, I like to my my number one thing. It's not the only thing, but my number one thing is is books because I just like to read or whatever. Of course. And so I thought about you know I'm sitting there staring at my like bookshelf. I'm like, man, what one makes the most sense for him? Mm -hmm. And uh, it ended up being like uh, one of the newest books that I got surprisingly. But um, and then I just, like surprise I guess like surprised him with that or whatever. And he was just like so like taken aback and appreciative of what it. Was the book? Um, <clears throat> it's uh, it's called Open. It's an autobiography for uh, Andre Agassi. That's sick. And well, I just like I heard it come up so many times, specifically on Tim Ferriss, not mm. just him, but like his guests too. I've but, heard some people talk about it too. It sounds like it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So like even like the introduction, and everything is pretty pretty wild. So I mean, it like wakes or uh, it starts off by him like literally laying on the ground. Like, he's smoking right meth or some shit, right? No. <laughs> oh. Well, he he did do that too. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but it, it was like the at towards the end of his career, it was before his last U.S. Open. Got it. And like he's laying on the ground because he can't lay on the bed because his back is so fucked up. Mm. And uh, and then it like goes back to his like childhood and stuff. But like basically, his dad, um, he was from uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was somewhere in like Europe, I think, but. Anyway, he basically told him, like, you're going to be fucking number one no matter what, like, from a very young age. So he put all this pressure on him mm. to a detriment in a lot of ways um, at the beginning of his life. And 
because he he says it repeatedly throughout the book. Like he's like, I don't even fucking like tennis. Like I fucking hate tennis. Damn. And I, I just find it really interesting. But he still became number one. Yeah, so he it, it's like literally this roller coaster yeah. between like his relationships with tennis and out, you know off the court and stuff. It's like really intriguing. Tigerish. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, because really, like some people look at that level almost like borderline abuse, mm-hmm. but then those people most of the time become those people. So it's like, well, and then you, would they change that or would they yeah. not change that? Even though they hate it, maybe at times that I always think that's an interesting dynamic. Yeah. And then like on a, like a humanizing level, he, it shows and it was a lot of detail too. I'm like, how the fuck does he have this much detail, but how much of a mental head case he is? Because like, I only, I only see Andre Agassi as the ball guy, the ball tennis guy. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he had like, you know, '80s rock star hair. Before. Oh no, I say I only see him as that guy because I'm older than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So you get <laughs> yeah. it. But like, that's he looked the, like fucking yeah, George yeah. Michael. Yeah, he well, he, <laughs> he has like the, the you know the Jordan earring and everything. Oh yeah, he, yeah. So mm. he looked he looked like a he looked every, like he was in a big hair band. Yeah, that's sick. But, but when he started out, like people were like fucking with him because he was kind of like breaking through this mold of like you got to wear all white. He's a bad boy. Like, yeah. So he's a bad boy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's I definitely recommend it. So. Where was it going with that? But uh, yeah, so I guess like on a personal level, yeah, yeah. So on a on a personal brand level, I just like I try to make myself indispensable. Like I want to be, or like how can I sometimes strategically be the go to guy? Which yeah. is what you just said. You just always want to be. You just want to let people know that you're reliable. Like if they need something yeah. from you, you can help them. You're gonna deliver. I feel yeah. like uh, individually, I've had I had this conversation with all you guys really early too, because I think when you know that's like the major like. We're going to get better at graphics. We're going to get better at video. We're going to get better at the site because you guys are willing to do it. Like I knew that was just time involved, but like the dependability is like the main thing that you need to know what your go-to guys that I can depend on you to not only get what I need done, but then I know over time, if you're dedicated to that, you're going to get better at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I would argue that you guys are elite at it now and continuing to get better. So it's like now, cause it's just time involved. And I think when somebody that also operates that way, knows there's somebody that's dependable then you can just execute and the biggest thing i want to be able to do is just execute so i'm going to give you a quick example this guy comes to my house because i need carpet (laughs) okay okay sore subject (laughs) yeah well i fucked myself on this one i think i'm gonna tell you why (laughs) oh really well partly because i talked to him too much so he comes in seems like a nice guy he's like you know i mean my carpet this area is it's 15 by 15 I can't even read a tape measure and I could fucking, ta- I could do the same, my fucking job <laughs> anyway. So he starts talking to me and he starts telling me, Oh, you know, I used to be in wrestling like, like WWE. Yeah. Oh. Well, <laughs> not probably not WWE, but <laughs> in like, WWE. Okay. yeah. yeah I, I, no, I know what you mean. <laughs> so I was like, so I go, Oh, I know, uh, you know, yeah. Carl Anderson and, and big LG. And he's like, Oh my gosh, I used to be in promotions with those guys like way back in the day. So, but he's measuring as he's talking. Dude, it's like an hour goes by. This dude's talking to me. This room is small. His job's way over at this point, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, man, I hope this guy did his fucking job. I remember kind of thinking about it myself because I'm thinking is like, he, yeah. So anyway, all right. The uh, the uh, carpet guy comes. The lady from the store tells Rachel when the carpet guy comes, they're gonna measure it and put the carpet in the same day. I've never heard of that service. They're calling it a concierge service. So this dude comes in and doesn't know how to measure. I'm thinking, well. You know, are they just going to pop the carpet in? Like, where's this carpet stuff at? <laughs> so he says, oh, I'm not putting in the carpet today. I was like, okay. So bang, low, low level of execution. They t- give Str- me a strike one. Strike one. They yeah. give me an expectation they can't meet. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> lied to us, basically. And then he's like, you know what? My internet's not working right now. I'll shoot that link over for you guys to pay for this carpet that you thought you were going to get today, but you're not getting today um, by five o'clock. Doesn't send the fucking link. Rachel has to ask him twice. He finally, this is the fucking wrestling guy. Finally sends the fucking link. So then we pay for it. It, It's way too much for how small this is anyway. We pay for it. And then the guys show up yesterday, three weeks later, shit show so far, to put the carpet in. So all of a sudden, Rachel calls me. She goes, you know they ain't got enough carpet, right? <laughs> no way. I swear to you. I, I don't know, I, yeah. I, so this, mind you, I've moved this shit out of my room twice. Yeah. The first time that I thought the guy that couldn't measure was going to put it in. And the second time, because these guys are actually coming to put the carpet in. 
these dudes are super cool. It ain't their fucking problem. Yeah. So they rip up my old carpet. They're putting in the tax strips. They're putting down the thing. And then they realize they ain't got enough carpet because this motherfucker measured it wrong. <laughs> yeah, 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 right? So now he comes over. He said, sir, he said, uh, and Ray, so Rachel calls me because they must have told their boss and he called the only contact. She called me. She goes, those guys tell you they ain't got enough carpet? I go, no, they haven't told me that yet. She goes, yeah, they ain't got enough to finish it. She's like, you fucking believe that shit? And I go, no. I said, but it's going to be awesome because it's going to be free. Yeah. So, then, yeah. <laughs> so this guy, then he, he hears me on the phone. He comes over and his boss is on his earphone. He's like, yeah, sir. He's like, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put the stuff back on the padding. They had carpet square, a carpet strip that went around the outside so we don't step on the fucking nails. Yeah. And they put this one little island of carpet <laughs> in the middle. So I'm my front and, and he's like, we got to order the carpet. It takes two weeks. <laughs> so, so I said, is that your boss on the phone? He's like, yeah, you can hear. It. I said, tell him this is awesome because it's going to be free. And he's like, well, yeah. I'm like, no, no. Awesome. Like, you know, <laughs> so, so anyway, so I haven't got a chance to argue with him yet. But my point is that of this whole long story. And by the way, last night I was laying on the, the padding watching TV. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it looks at me. I mean, literally, I'm going to show you a picture. There's a square in front of my couch of carpet sitting on all padding. And then there's the line on the outside. Amazing. Yeah. The execution of the first thing that was told to me would have been unbelievable purely because my carpet area was so small that they could have done that. Measured it properly. Went out, got one guy, came and put it in. I'd have been blown away. Expectation was set executed mm -hmm. <clears throat> and just got my shit. And then every time someone I know for the rest of my life would ask me about Home Depot carpet, I would tell them this amazing situation that I went through. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to tell them about low execution and absolute fucking shit show in below the line. So operation. All right, let's spin it this way. If you're in on their my podcast, if you're in their situation, let's flip it. Now yeah. let's say you are those guys. Yeah. How do you save the relationship? Mm. You say, sir, this is not my fault. I'm going to talk to my boss. You're going to have the boss call and he's going to say, you know what? This is such a shit show. That piece of carpet is going to be free. And I'm going to have it on this exact day done so we can meet your expectations then when you go to purchase another amount of carpet from Home Depot, I'm going to make sure that you get 10% off. And then I would mm -hmm. say, I like Home Depot again. Instead, that guy called Rachel. I'm going to have to call and argue with him to get it for free. And I still don't know when the fucking carpet's coming in. Yeah. She says she thinks next week. But do I believe him? No. Whack. Yeah. Whack as fuck. Because... <laughs> Also, like, you got to think, like, if you can get, like, every time, like, probably in that business, you get a client, if you, if you keep a hold of that client, have a good relationship, they'll always come back to you. Always. Like, that's like one of those things. If you find someone in that space, yeah. you're just going to keep working with them. And they're going to refer a million them. people. That's what well, I'm saying. And, and we fuck up stuff. Shipping stuff fucks up. Like, stuff happens all the time. It's all how you respond to it. But I guess at the end of the day, like, back to the original thing is, the execution and dependability. So right now I have zero, like I think they execute at a zero level. I have no like confidence that they're actually going to put my carpet in right. And do I still want to now pay the same amount for this situation or this interaction? Hell no. Cause it's not as valuable right now. I'm just mm -hmm. pissed off fucking mess. <laughs> it's fucking so stupid. I told him, I said, you know what's funny is that couch you just moved, that couch was free. You know why? <laughs> he goes, why, sir? I said, because that armchair right there, like they put it in the wrong spot three times in a row. That couch was nine grand, bro. I got that bitch for free. Because for a year, the guys would take it off the truck and they, they started to know me. They're like, they did it again. I might just put it back on the truck. Not because I'm being a dick, because literally when the chair went together, you would try to sit and there'd be an armchair in the middle of the fucking couch. Yeah. It was an L, but they kept putting the thing. It was like ridiculous. So you just got to really set expectation, do it promptly and be reliable. You're going to have shit where you fuck up, but when you fuck up, 
you got to have a situation where you can regain their confidence, hopefully. And if you are on that other level where you're just always fucking up, you're going to be basically not. Or if you're going to set expectations, you like set a them. realistic expectation, I like that first too. of all, and then like almost like bake it in. So you're going to, so you are going to over deliver like no matter what. Yeah, like that. Set you yourself know? up for, yeah, yeah, set yourself up like that. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, I actually gave that advice to someone the other day that's taken on um, uh, like a consulting thing. It's like, don't take on more than you, than you, like that person doesn't know how much work that is. Don't take on an overload amount and then not deliver and then you lose the confidence of that person. Mm -hmm. Take yeah. on a little bit, do it, figure it out, and Kill then it. if you want more, take on more. Because a person that operates like all of us at this point, right? And how I have been for so long, if I'm like pumped about something and Danny's like, I got that. And then you really only got 12% of it. <laughs> then I go, what the fuck is Danny doing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you don't want to be that guy either. So I think understanding that dynamic of who you're working with, their expectation, what you're able to do or want to do, all of that is really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, like just being super transparent with the expectations yeah. of what you can do and can't do. Like, it's okay to tell them that, like, you, like we got to slow down. Basically, like, it's all right to say, like, I yes. can't get this done in the twelve hours you want me to do. It. It's like, <laughs> like I, I always set myself up. I give them like a longer time frame. Yeah, like, because yeah. if they're cool with that time frame and you can get it done way faster, then they're fucking way more happy. That's exactly what Danny just said. You know? So then you look mm -hmm. like a fucking superstar, but you're the exactly. one that sets the superstardom. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, yeah, you know what's going on. Like you're I, the dog. Well, and I think Cole, the other thing too is you, like me and you've had these conversations. <clears throat> I don't understand or Trey too how long it takes to put together stuff sometimes because I don't do that. So I don't know how much a graphic that doesn't have a template in it that or like maybe a system or like a daily blog. Like when I called you this morning is a great example. I was like, I figured you already had the daily blog for Danny because you're always ahead mm -hmm. and we wanted a mic'd up one. So I was like, I don't know how much longer that takes, but if you can shift to that, it'd be great. And you're like, oh yeah, it won't take that long. I got it. You know what I'm saying? Or like Col Trey putting on uh, the squat video versus like, which is one camera angle versus what we do today. I don't know that difference in time. So like, you know, the, the person that is doing the skill relaying that time frame and expectation is really huge too because most of the time what you think the other person knows they don't know i know more because i work with you guys now but i don't do that so i don't really understand it yeah. and so the person in this seat usually goes i'm just trying to do all this stuff they think it takes way less than it does and on the flip side uh, the same thing with me to create stuff sometimes take longer than it does right it's not it's sometimes it's easy sometimes not and i think it's the same with you guys so i think you being transparent that's the long-winded way to say the transparency is important because then oh i thought that was a fucking siren or something that was weird uh the transparency is really important so you can have that relate working relationship mm -hmm. good so yeah. anyway i think these are all good points yeah <clears throat> great all right uh we'll be back pick number this is five five four, four or five yeah okay i'm back on the clock With pick number five in the 2023 roundtable Q&A draft, I choose uh, Peter Dinosaur 8. Great username. <laughs> that, right. is, that is fucking yeah. amazing. All right. Shout out to Rex. Yeah, here we go. All right. He <laughs> wants to know uh, portfolio moves the gang has. <laughs> See if anybody picks up on that. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the portfolio moves the gang has recently done or is gearing up to do. Ooh. So, <clears throat> he wants to start. Cool. I think you should start because you've shifted from uh, one asset class to another most recently. 100%. A little bit. Yeah. I think so, it's a good point. Shifted assets. Yeah. So <laughs> first off, I want to say this is all just a le it's a leveling game, basically. Fuck of, yeah, it is. You know, Cole. Starting from the yes. bottom and just setting Over yourself here. up, building up yeah. for you know these big type moves. So uh, yeah, fuck with probably that. as of next week, I will officially become a homeowner. Hey, yeah. Yeah. which which is then teeing me, uh, uh, teeing me up to become a like uh, landlord, a landlord. Yeah. yeah. So you can have a preacher curl in your backyard, dude. So yeah, I yeah, I, I get a lot of ideas for Just out there actually. Anyway. But hey, yeah, so I mean, learn like, from your mistakes. Run that by Michaela. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, shout out. <laughs> if we run all the way back, like. For those who've been following, whenever I was living at the trap house, yes. I was setting myself up, trying to become debt free, paying off my college loans, so saving good. up money, basic investing, stuff like that. Executed that. The next one was basically building up, you know, getting more money behind me to invest in businesses, do all this stuff, create businesses, whatever. Um, that led to the creation of Varsity Creative, uh, the Max ownership, ownership of Max, stuff yeah. like that. Still living below my means. And now it has teed me up to where basically, 
I had like, I was able to make a move to get into a property, which the vision was this first house I get was going to be something that <coughs> obviously is, I don't need a house, mm -hmm. but if I can get into something that I know potentially I can hold on to and get an asset and then rent that out, that's what I was doing. Luckily, like I just been patiently waiting for opportunities and one just came up within like 12 hours. I made a move on and Michaela was not too happy about it, but I knew I trusted You were patiently myself. waiting. You were patiently looking. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Which is a different thing. You were really, yeah. you were just, just, brow this is all, you just browsing around. Yeah. Just looking. Which we talk about all the time, like keeping your eyes open yeah. for opportunity. Once you start to like know that there's, you're looking for opportunity, <clears throat> one stuff will pop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So now you're about to be building uh, another asset class, which will be yeah. real estate and getting that whole process started. Which like the whole thing is, cause I've been reading like a good book called like uh, the millionaire real estate investor. Mm -hmm. And it talks about Daddy like, Keller. you know, thinking about a million, like what, like what does it take to basically, what's the intangibles and the mindset you have to have to even get to a high level? Like mm -hmm. you have to, you know, which all, all of us are really good at it. The next thing was buy like a uh, buy a million, which is you just essentially keep getting stuff to basically work up to where you have like a million dollars in equity or whatever, which that's like the long game. And then it's, you get it back to where you own a million. Now those assets that you bought are now flipping it into where now it's not, you have like a shit ton of debt or you got all this stuff going on. It's like, it's all straight up a hundred percent. You're on top now. The, uh, the being a millionaire thing, like a lot of people that don't understand finance, even just basic level finance, they don't realize that it's not just having a million dollars in your savings account. Yeah. It's actually never that. <laughs> Probably it's like, oh, I have three hundred thousand dollars in equity in this real estate. I got you know cash. I got this. I got some valuable. Like, it's a it's usually like a net worth million. Yeah, there's people that have a million or whatever in there. But at the end of the day, like what he's saying is between the purchases, you're paying stuff off. You're getting people rent things out. Like it accumulates to where now I own this million of all this shit. Yeah, and that's like I think a little easier to. None of it's easy, first off, but it's easier to understand and build towards. Not just, okay, I got $1,000 in my savings. I need to make that a million. No. It doesn't really work that way. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? But I think that's what some people think, Cole. It's like we talk about all the time. It's just literally the compound effect. It's just like finding these opportunities. You know, you take this little 15% that you're now up, mm -hmm. flip it into something else and try to do the same thing over and over. This has just led it to this opportunity, which like the whole goal is like, you know, like I'll be living in it for a few years, eventually go into another house and rent that out. And now someone's paying my mortgage. But at some point, whether it's 10 up. to 20 years from now, it's going to flip to where now it's just a straight up cash flow, yep. straight up cash flow. And it's a whole asset that I can then leverage yes. to get more assets. So it's literally the mm -hmm. compound effect yeah. in real life. Some rich guy shit. Yeah. Fuck with it. So Trayvon. Um, I haven't really been like, making any like crazy moves lately or anything yeah. but um just like keep watching like cryptocurrency and mm -hmm. shit like that because like want to just keep like stacking ethereum basically so you have been buying ethereum still i mean not right now because it's at like two thousand dollars it's up yeah, a whole bunch yeah but like just been like watching the markets and everything when yeah. you said that um you were still doing some options shit like not that long ago yeah, so you've been like playing options, in the yeah. market but not necessarily like buying and holding anything no yeah yeah, I'm yeah. mainly just trade yeah trade stacking cash yeah i like it <clears throat> I think it's important to say that all three of you guys live well below your means, but still have good lifestyles. Yeah. See, you've all three of you I've watched work from right out of college to this point, right? Which is like a unique experience because all three of you guys I've seen do that. You've all operated very similar that way. You've all provided. Now you're getting into your house. Danny just got a house. Trey lives in the apartment he loves downtown. Like you guys have all provided a quality lifestyle but still continued, in my opinion, to live below your means the entire time. So you could continue to build businesses, buy and trade stuff. Like you can't have both. Mm -hmm. I think when you rush the first part, that's what fucks you up. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're in something you really shouldn't be in yet. And then you're behind the eight ball instead of taking just a little bit more time. None of you guys are that old. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying wait till you're fucking 45 to get a cool apartment. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> None of you guys are that old. So it's like, I think that patience that you guys displayed really early is now you're seeing paying off, mm -hmm. which is really <laughs> awesome for me to watch yeah. because I watched the entire fucking process. And it just comes back to like preaching like the lifestyles, like creating the lifestyle that you want to live. Yeah. This is just because with this house, I wanted something like 
again, I don't need a house. This is a huge thing. He's like, I'm in no worries. Like, like I don't have any like kids or anything that I have to worry about getting yeah. a house to support all them. Yeah. So I can make, but the you need moves. an asset. Yes. But I can make the moves now to get something. And honestly, like the last thing I wanted to do was to get a house that was more than I needed for no reason. And now I can't invest how I want to. Yep. I don't have the extra cash to live how I live now. Yep. Like I wanted everything to stay the same. Yeah. Basically. That's all calculated move, dude. Exactly. I fucking love it. Yeah. So good. Danny. Um, I guess to mention like on a similar vein, like with Cole getting the house and stuff like that, it was similar for me with like when I got my condo, mm -hmm. like it was like a bit of a fixer upper cosmetically mostly. Um, and the goal, whole goal was to move or like live there for like two years, move out, run it out. It didn't end up happening the way I envisioned it just because it was a little bit older. And mm -hmm. then, you know, as you, as you know, when you move into somewhere, you uncover this and that and all that bullshit. So yeah, yeah. it basically ended up not being worth it, but I came out, um, but you made money on yeah, it. I, was, I came, it I came out next. in the green. Yeah. So which, which was obviously huge, but. Um, so I, I thought that would be helpful to mention for, for people. But then the, the second thing is, um, and I've mentioned it before, probably on the podcast, but as far as like the max ownership thing, like, or and when an opportunity comes up and not being able to take advantage of it, mm -hmm. um, that really bothered me. Yeah. Um, that used to really bother me too. Yeah. So like making, you know, your, your personal vow to like basically not let that happen again. And so yeah. that's how the max thing was mm -hmm. absolutely no fucking problem. So, and then I guess the other thing to mention too, is like, if you do move into a house or like you start making more money and stuff, it's not like, Hey, how can you fucking spend this money? It's what you said. It's how can you deploy and invest that money better or just hang on to it until, until yeah. something comes until by. something is there that you're like, yeah. Oh great. I have an, I have money to do something. Exactly. I think like, I remember, Viv not vivid like situations per se but I remember the undertone of like my parents like always behind the eight ball and then there's never like the opportunity thing is not even a thing because mm -hmm. you're like if you don't and my dad had gambling problems that obviously hurt us bad but it's like if you're always behind because you haven't set yourself up how can you ever get ahead and I'm not even saying uh like get ahead by like millions of dollars I'm saying just like not be super stressed. Your bills are paid and you have a little extra. And then over time you can compound it. So when there is, Hey man, I'm going to start this business. Like we're raised. I mean, literally people do businesses that start at $5,000 and then people get involved in it and they, they can blow up to whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but you, if you can't, if you ain't got 200 bucks in your bank account or you if got, you have a big personal credit card bill. Yeah. You, you got no just... shot. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think, I just knew like my dad always tried to like try new businesses and do things. He just never had because he never had no financial discipline with that stuff. So there's no way to get ahead. And then when I first was personal training people that had money, that's the one thing about being a personal trainer. You're around a lot of people that have money. They would talk about the things you guys would hear me talk about when you first started working with me that you weren't able to be involved in. Right. Whether it's buying businesses, starting businesses, stock stuff mm -hmm. like and I and I kept remembering like. I want to, I want to invest in that stock or like they would even have sometimes opportunities for me and I just couldn't do it. And unless they would front me the money, which I don't like to get in a bunch of that where I'm doing sessions and like, it was like, why I was like, this is why, this is why these people are rich. They have enough money to take. And I just remember I hating that feeling. Like I have to get to the spot where I can make the decision. Is this for me or is it not for me? Exactly. And yeah. then I got to a position where some are going to win and some aren't. I've lost a couple and I've won a couple. And the this kind of goes back to my port, main portfolio moves to us long-winded. But I lost in some crypto shit. We all did in pack, mm -hmm. right? Just is what it is. I, I kind of like, L, I, I kind of shoulder that one <laughs> a little bit. But the flip side of that is I know exactly where I need to put my money now. Because I know the dividend game, I feel like extremely well. It's part of personality driven because my entire life is high risk. It doesn't feel high risk to me, but in theory it is because I've been running my own business for so many on years paper. on paper, right? I think the opposite way is high risk because someone else could just come and fire you, but that it's whatever. It's a different discussion. Deeper. <laughs> yeah, it's deeper. But the reality is when I do get my money, which higher tax bracket, you're paying ultimate taxes, blah, 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 whatever. I want to know it's, absolutely making something 
So I don't want it just have to go up or down. I want to know I'm guaranteed something. So that's why dividend investing makes a lot of sense to me. So I knew with the pack investment, I was either going to make a hundred million or I was going to make zero right now. It's looking like zero, <laughs> but I know that the next, however many dollars I put in, I'm not tempted with one of those anymore. It's just not for me. Yeah. If the other situation we talk about happens, it happens. But the reality is like, I know exactly. So I would argue that, and my first real estate play did not work. Me and Mark Evans DM, shout out Mark Evans, did, did not work. Back in the day. So I didn't fuck with real estate for a really long time until I felt like one, I could shield the money monthly because back then I couldn't. And so it was stressful for me. Two, I understood the environment, which was the Airbnb situation downtown, then, other than the house yeah. I live in. And it was like, and then I got lucky because the market fucking jumped up and I made 150 racks on it in like two years. But the reality is I, I got dinged up first. So my point is that I've always been trying stuff, but most of the time, the first time it doesn't work. I hate to say that, but a lot, now maybe my business is a little bit better. But so yeah. I think that that's a long winded way to say like, you want to put yourself in the position to have opportunities, but just understand that some of them are going to teach you the lesson for the next one that could really make you a lot of money too. But that's with business anyway. So I, I look at things a little differently because I've already been there so many different yeah, times. Yeah. I, and to, to go back to how, how you knew like the market and stuff like that with the Airbnb, like the yeah. opportunity, I was thinking the same thing about like this property a ton. because right now I feel like I'm getting dinged up just because I, I know that for a short period of time, like these next few months, I'm going to be paying because I'll be double paying rent and all this yeah. shit, fixing it up. To get into the stuff. situation, you're going to But to get into the bit. situation, like, I'm cool with, like, chilling on it for, like, 10 years because I know, like, dude, Intel's going Come in on, there. Man. Amazon's around. Like, I think there will be opportunities where, like, that house will go up in equity. And, like, who's not to say I develop an, a relationship with Intel and, like, now they know that, yo, know, I got an exec coming in. Oh, they got a dope little crib with a fucking nice-ass backyard. I got a gym outside. Go do curls. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> You know we I mean? talk about that money, kid. Yeah, That's what we like, talk about. Like, like what we talking about? <laughs> but my point, so to your point of my point, is your thought process around it. You're super comfortable with it because you know all those things are true. Yeah, honestly, like just be honest. For like, be honest, Cole. For like this house and what I'm paying for it. it hold on, a whole another thing is right now the mortgage rates are high, dude. Let's say those go back down again, you I can, can refinance. And now it's a whole, it's a whole, now. The whole game of being on the upside just got way fucking faster. Yeah. So that that's a whole play too. Even uh, honestly, just because I'm not really a real estate guy, like I own properties now, but I don't own properties because I'm out looking for properties. Like the one we're in, I own because this is where our businesses are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I've been pushed into these things because of just business, but now I understand the whole mortgage rate thing. I never mm -hmm. really paid attention. I mean, I knew the difference, but when I, but every time I've went to go get a mortgage on something, the rates weren't high. So this is the first time I experienced as a guy who has some money rates go to 8%. And now I see clearly the difference yeah. on the loan I have here is on 4.1. Like I got, I get what these old real estate, I'm around these old real estate guys. Oh yeah. When it's 4.1, I'm second mortgage to everything. Yeah. I'm thinking, and well, why would you do that? And it's because they knew the money was so cheap. Yeah. There, Honestly, there's, there's, there's levels to all that shit too. If this house was, and I, again, I probably wouldn't have made a move if, if it was any more expensive than what it is yeah, now. It was the sweet spot if, for you. Because like I'm pay, basically what I'm paying in right now is going to be the exact same for the mortgage. The so lateral like, if, move. Even if it wise. was an extra 500 bucks a month, I probably would be like, do I really like want this? Mm -hmm. Like it, I would really contemplate that way more. Think about this. So you went lateral move. You, you had to suck up a little of your nest egg, but that's going towards your equity long term. So it's still in an asset. You didn't mm -hmm. spend the money. Yep. You just reinvested it into something different. It's all different. Uh, I think even like the um, wording around stuff is super important because Rachel would even say, oh, you spent that money on stock. I'm like, mm, spending money on the Gucci shoes. Not spending the money, but, but, mm -hmm. but they did look great on TMZ, but <laughs> <laughs> I just said, but humble brag. Yeah, yeah. Or uh daily mail, one of them anyway. Oh, so okay. yeah, oh, but what I'm saying is though, like when you understand what those words mean in that dialogue, like I'm like, all right, I just invested money yesterday. I'm going to buy income. That's why I do like what, uh, the dude from the wealth squad, when he started that whole yeah. narrative, I'm taking my money and I'm buying income. Once you understand that with the dividend plays, which he's heavy on, that's easy to me. It's not spending anything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, oh, today I'm going to invest X. 
and I just raise my, you know, monthly salary to X. That's an easy thing to understand for me. So mm -hmm. anyway, I fuck with it. 100%. All right. Yeah, you're That's back me? on the clock. Okay. So yeah, if you want to choose one here, hold on. Let me, uh, yeah. let me hit that. Oh, this is going to be one for you guys. All right, here we go. Favorite movie. Mm. Favorite movie? Yeah, that's one of the questions that came in. I knew you guys would fuck with this one. Yeah. Man. If you can only pick one, Danny. Oh, uh, so like one shit. ultimate. Like, okay, here I'm gonna I'm gonna just elaborate. You get the one. You get to watch one movie, the rest of your life. <laughs> wow. So it might not even be your absolute favorite movie, but it's the one that you could like be like, all right, watching this movie again because it now it can't be Debbie Does Dallas either. What the fuck? <laughs> is that even a movie? It's an old porn. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. That's what I was hoping it's, it was a, it's yeah. the one they reference uh, yeah, all the time. It's the one you Whatever. Had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about, but one movie, the rest of your life, go. Damn. That's, yeah, one movie. Uh, and you're a movie buff, so this is going to be a hard yeah. question for you. Kind of. Uh, I would say if I only could pick one across any genre, it's probably Forgetting Sarah Marshall. What is it? It's called Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Okay. Yeah, Great I've never movie. seen that. Yeah, it's it? it's just fucking. You've seen it, Trey? Yeah. No, oh, okay. I mean, it's just fucking hilarious. It's got Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah, dude, mm -hmm. you got to watch okay, it. Okay, I so, guess. If that's your ultimate movie of all time. I mean, like Jonah Hill's in it oh, with yeah, all his snarky funny. remarks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason Siegel is in okay. it. Um, Russell Brand's in it, and he's hilarious. Russell Brand's pretty funny. So funny. Mm -hmm. And then like Kristen Bell and Mila Kunis. But yeah, it's like, in, it's like, it's like in, the, it's in Hawaii and everything. <laughs> okay. It's just like a, it's, an, it's, it's, a, a, it's, a, it's kind of like a feel good movie, but it's, it's really funny though too. I think she kind of likes me actually. Who? Who? Mila Kunis. Oh yeah. Well, she, she doesn't know, she doesn't know oh, yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my, that's my pick. I used to say that about Jennifer Aniston and Rachel all the time. Like, you know, Jennifer Aniston, like, I can pull her, right? <laughs> she likes, she's like, no, you can't. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's all confidence. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Trey, your favorite movie. At least movie. a little bit confident. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite um, movie? Okay, so like if we could watch one movie. One movie. One movie for the rest of our lives. Um, I think I would have to go with like an animation movie. Ooh, all right. Um, so I would go with like a classic, um, the original Toy Story. Mm. So good. Ooh, I I like that. Pick. Yeah, that's what I would get. It is really good. Um, but real quick, though, like favorite movie yeah. though, all time Interstellar. Um, what's that? It's good. good. Yeah. Amazing, Daddy movie. Nolan. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, what's your B then? Favorite movie. So you said one you could watch the rest of your life, which I think this is a cool adapt question. And then favorite movie. Yeah, I mean, if I were to go a different route, I would probably go <laughs> kind of in the same area he's in. Yeah. It would be Inception or Batman. Mm, I saw Inception. Dude. Yeah, because it, it's the same director across for yeah. all of them. So okay. like, um. Yeah, fuck. I don't know, man. Yeah, the the fucking bat or the Dark Knight Rises is is, is, is like so wet. Like, Super wet. <laughs> yeah, I'm so. Clueless. But in Inse Inception, Inception is like a total movies. mind fuck though, too. Just like Interstellar. Interstellar yeah. So, okay. and, and the soundtrack is just wet. Yeah. yeah. Super okay. wet. Um, <laughs> so the one movie I would watch forever or whatever is uh, Varsity Blues. Okay. Hundred percent. I have never All, seen any of these movies. Dude, I didn't get my shit. It's together. the perfect mix. You of, haven't seen Mars. Damn, you're, that's your era. Yeah. yeah. Varsity Blues growing up because they're like blue and white. Yeah. Looked like like bells are like my high school. Oh, okay. So it's the ultimate mix of small town football. It's exactly what I pictured high school was like and actually was like basically. Okay. But it's the mix of like your you got life lessons in there. It's comedy. You got Miss Davis in you there. You can identify it. Paul too. Walker. Super, Paul right, Walker's yeah. in it. Paul Walker. I mean, yeah. dude, like R. that R. movie in like the coaching and like all that stuff in there. I could watch that nonstop. I could watch it every day. Honestly. I got okay. a question. Is this why you love the number sixty nine so much? Because of Billy Bob. Yeah. You know, I dressed up as Billy Bob for Halloween, right? It, okay. Yeah. I was like, there's got to be at least a little bit of a time. Yeah, no, sure. like yeah, Billy Bob. Like yeah, I love I love all those guys. So, Tweeter, so, love them. Dude, so Billy Bob, he's driving this big blue truck, and he's literally taking like pancakes, and he's wiping it in butter. I think I've seen that clip before. And, and then he's drink, he's squirting syrup he, into yeah, his mouth. Yeah, he's drinking maple syrup, and he's got, and he carries a, he has a pig. Uh, yeah. What is he, does he call him? Bacon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he has a pig called Bacon, <laughs> and he goes, he goes, name. I love that dog. Billy Bob going puke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So wow. yeah, oh yeah, and they're partying stuff like on yeah. there. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all time. But also to go off these guys, yeah. Christopher Nolan, one of my hugest like creative mm -hmm. inspirations that dude every single one of the movies is a banger yeah like Which, just so good yeah. name a few the the inception oh it's the same guy so he has a new movie Jeez. called 
uh, Tenet. Tenet. Have you guys watched that yet? Not yet. I would need it's to. It's even more of a mind fuck than Inception, yes. Interstellar. It's he's big on like time, time warping and shit like that. Like the whole movie, you're stuff, yeah. like, I don't want actually. Are you guys gonna watch it? Can yeah. I, like, can I talk me. about? Okay, nah. I won't tell you. Fuck but off, Cole. it's no. way more of a mind. <laughs> it just you watch it, and it's one of those movies where you basically have to watch it like three times to, to even it. understand what's going on. Yeah. Those are the yeah. best movies. Yeah. though. like when you so, have to rewatch them. I think the problem is within my life. Okay, <laughs> okay you ready for this? Yeah. Rachel would try to watch movies like that with me, and I'd be so tired because I got upside fall asleep. Yeah. So I would never get because I would be like not like not that in the movie watching anyway, and then it'd be kind of like you have this one you have to yeah. really think about, and I'd be like, yeah, I'm out. So but <laughs> when, when I watched Inception uh, the first time, I wasn't with subtitles, but then when I flipped them on, it cha- it changed absolutely everything. I watch everything helps. with subtitles. Yeah, yeah you have too. to watch it with subtitles. If you don't, you're a psychopath. All right. It's like, how do you know? My movie happens? I could watch <laughs> yeah. for and Leo's the rest it. of my life is probably Goonies. I cannot. I, I want to find a treasure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you got homies on the block. He's like dumb, they're Dumbo. They're getting. Favorite. They're getting together. They're going against the. They're going against the guys trying to take their house. Yeah. They, it has pirate shit in it, so it's got right. history in it. It's got fucking gold. It's got um, what was the other thing? I think it's just like the tunnels. Like I think all of it for some reason. The first time I watched it, I was like, I've seen it probably 50 times mm-hmm. every time it's on i have to watch it my favorite movie though i think is patriot with mel gibson shout out mel and i think it's purely because of this and I, i've said this before but i think where we grew up it looks like the landscape mm-hmm. and because That's there cool. was there's battles and stuff like around where we grew up and here and i think i can i don't know why but when i see that scene where all of a sudden the British and the American troops are on in his field and they're marching towards each other. And he walks out of the very like big porch house, which I've always been a fan of that whole vibe, that colonial vibe. He comes out and literally can see the battlefield happening on his farm and to know that that was really happening like mm-hmm. around here. Right. That for some reason I can put myself in there, and I think that's probably when people are really into movies. They're, and every time I see that scene, I go, I cannot imagine that either whether I was in that line or I was in that house, and that was a reality of where we're from and where we grew up, not that long ago. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, that movie, I think between how good he is and how much how how well they depicted the style of war that we were fighting, which was very like really American Indian or Native American because we didn't have as many people against all, like all of that shit like drew me in. So every, those are two movies that um, I put my, I can actually feel myself like being in them. And yeah, that's yeah. why I think why I like them. Yeah. So, kind Sick. Of, yeah. It's like uh, there's the, I will give a, a, sh- a special shout out though to like uh, old school. Oh, the movie oh, yeah. old school or road rule or ro- so uh, road I, trip. That that's my. Other I one. almost went to that, to that era because I almost I almost said super bad, super bad. Because yeah, super bad, yeah, yeah, super bad is absolutely epic. Yeah, uh, I think this uh, new generation of kids like and and they're missing out on American Pie. American <laughs> Pie, Ameri- they're really missing yeah. out. on American, American Pie was so, really good. Yeah, that was really yeah. that was really good. The the old school because of Will Ferrell, right? When yeah, he the one who was the streaking fun. thing. Yeah. yeah. Unfucking believable. So good. So <laughs> it's so, so that like pineapple, pineapple express. Too. Is pretty yeah, good. the blue part. Yeah, like blue. there's just so many. And then I really yeah. liked Road Trip. I thought that shit was fucking hilarious. Yeah. I don't know what's with a really skinny dude. dude likes the big chick, and then like they're just on. And Stifler is just like unbelievably epic. Like yeah. There's just so many good pieces yeah. of that. A movie. few movies I would also add. I'd watch on repeat if I could have like a cycle of like five movies to yeah. watch. It'd be Varsity Blues. I would go. Uh, Billy Madison. Billy Madison's really always good. Always watch Billy Madison. Billy Madison. Really um, I would add in Friday Night Lights, another football movie, yeah. banger movie. Um, I would go Step Brothers. Mm-hmm. Step Brothers yeah. and Talladega Nights. Talladega banger movie. Yeah. Talladega Nights is one that I've watched multiple times. Yeah, that that gives that gets a special. The yeah. the fucking Ricky Bobby, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so good. That's really I good. love you, man. Too another good one. Never seen another that. amazing movie. Yeah, so good. All right. Um, you, you would know, yeah. You you would know why if you watched that. Why I would like that movie. Which one? 
I love you, man. Okay. Because it's like there's a lot of like dry <laughs> humor and very painfully <laughs> awkward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I was that, gonna say something, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, guys want to do like two more questions? Yeah, sure. Because uh, that will be in between six and nine. It'll be okay. Seven, dude. Right. So I was pick five. So all right, pick number six. Whose pick is it? Uh, I th- uh, is it me? Yeah, it's you. All right, hold on. Oh, was I? Uh... Or no, actually, it's Danny. Sorry, Danny, it's you. Is it? Yeah, because you just asked the movie. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, t- 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 Danny is on the clock. Yeah, I'm looking. Uh, how do you shut off your work mind when it's family time? Ooh. Yeah. You guys want me to start? Because I got the oldest family. Sure. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead. Uh, how do I shut... All right, so I used to really try this, and it's extremely difficult in the early stages. So a couple things. When I was in the heaviest of building and didn't have real control of my time, my kids were really young, and I think that helped. So like the MP days, like everyone was so little, and you know maybe me and Rachel didn't get as much time, and I got time with the kids, but if they were like the ages now and I, if I flip my life and I'm as busy as I was then now, I would fucking hate it. Honestly, straight up. Like you wouldn't hate see it. a lot of stuff, man. I would miss everything basically. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to be that person. I'm just gonna be honest with you. That's not what I wanted for myself. Mm-hmm. So the timing of when my life things happen were, were good for me, but the integration became more of a thing for me because there's no block. There's no, there's no break. There is a break where you're not on your phone. I get that kind of stuff. And I, and I do do that when I get home, I try to really like just not mess with my shit as much as I can, but it's partly because we've built up this situation together. Right. So all of us can hopefully have more of that, but, um, the integration of like my food is just what it is. I just don't miss training. Like I've adapted around. That's why I get up sore. Like a lot of the things that I do are because I'm trying to integrate and not upset the other parts of life. That's the only reason why it works so good for me. Mm-hmm. If I wasn't willing to do some of these things that are quote unquote crazy, there'd be, there'd be zero, like zero balance to it. Because then instead of being to take my kids to practice at five, I'd be here training. And then I'd be home at seven thirty, and then I'd maybe eat dinner with my family and then I'd be in bed because I got to get up and go like, it's like, I just think about it. If I didn't have this strategy, how out of whack it would be. Mm-hmm. It's still going to be out of whack a little, anybody that's trying to be great or build something or with the hopes or aspirations to progress, you're going to have these issues because it's going to fight, but you hope to get it. You hope to start early enough, which you guys all have to get it to a point that when you know you have to force that time, not force because you don't want to do it, but force because like you can do it, that you have that ability. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a tricky spot. Yeah. But I just never wanted someone else to tell me, oh, no, no, no. Saturday, you can't come to this game because you got to fucking work. Yeah, fuck, that ain't going to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, for me, it's just setting like hard, harder boundaries. That's huge. Um, and that's kind of just like happened by default with having a kid and everything like that. So like with me... Like I'm, I'm getting here like an hour early than what the expectation is mm-hmm. on purpose, and because if I can go home and I don't have to literally take my laptop out of my bag, that's my goal. It's a win. Yeah. So, and obviously, not every day is exactly like yeah. that. There's stuff that pops up, or whatever. But that's just kind of like part of the territory, or whatever. But like that has been absolutely monumental, mm-hmm. like for me, because then I can actually like turn off to some extent, um, mm-hmm. and actually like be there i yeah, guess yeah. so and then it all comes back to just getting up early because then i can get the working out the lunges or whatever i can get it all out of my system and feel good and i don't feel like i have that cloud hanging over my head so we were talking about later. this a little bit like always feeling like you're behind yeah when you operate the way that we operate there's always more to do there's always one more email there's always one more graphic there's always one more of this that that's never going to change mm-hmm. because we're all trying to get better but i would say that when you've got a strategy of like kind of how we operate, there is like, you can feel like you're getting enough done that you don't feel like you're behind because you're ahead of the rest of the fucking planet basically. Mm -hmm. And so there's always stuff that carries over for me. But the reality is I never feel like, Oh, I didn't do enough. Mm -hmm. Even my not do enough 
is still so much more than everyone's mm-hmm. I did a lot. And I realized that a long ass time ago. So I think to your point, I want to leave it one and feel that way. <laughs> I've been up since sometimes three. You, sometimes you do. And sometimes I do. And I don't feel bad about it at all because I already did so much or whatever. You know what I mean? But then there's other days you're like, ah, uh, you know, I have to leave at this time because I have some shit to do yeah. and I didn't get enough done. But then I still think, well, I still did blah, 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 blah. So I don't know. I think it's, uh, I think the hard boundaries is important. I think starting young enough on the shit, you know, it's going to take a crap load of time and there's yeah. going to be pieces of your life where it's going to come back to that, where it's like, I've had to sit down with Rachel and say, back in the day, she would come to me and say, yo, like this is like really out of bounds. And I could do one of two things. I could say, you're right, because she might be right. And I could scale it back. Or I would say, this ain't the time for that. We just got to dig in for a little longer because that's just what it is, which I had a lot of those times too. So I think that transparency is like, Mm -hmm. you know what our goal is, meaning hers, to get to a certain point where I can operate like how you guys see me right now, literally. Like I had to do that part too. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. that, that... That transparency is an important part of it too. For sure. With your partner. So have a strategy. That's the key. Have a strategy, have a routine. About you, Cole. Um, You know, I think, uh, well, first off, from like a creative aspect, I think like shutting off is absolutely essential. Like I think like that boredom time where you can just like, it's not like you're trying to, you're trying to do something right now or make anything. You're just being you. You're just like fucking enjoying yourself, having fun. Like that's where all the creativity comes from. So I think that's crucial. But honestly, it's just like, you just got to learn how to fucking flip the switch. Basically you just know like, dude, you, and I would say with us, like our systems and like how we operate and what we make, we make a lot of shit day to day. Like <laughs> yeah. it's a, it's a ton of stuff it's a ton. and it might not be something new every day. We just, you know, come in and execute, but it's still a lot because like how you said, we, we've teed everything up to where like, if like we are cranking out shit, it sets us up for like, Oh, uh, like we got to go take care of some. I'm cool because I've already done. You already it. It's done. already good. So, so the I guess systems help a ton. Yeah. So whenever I get the chance to like, if nothing's going on and I can just make shit, I'll just keep making shit because I know like some might come up on Tuesday where you know maybe we do some random podcast because <laughs> someone's yeah. coming in. Up. I don't yeah. have to worry about anything. That's true. So, Fuck I think it's it. huge. Right. Anything to add, Trey? Um, no. Just phone on do not disturb and um like just like setting aside like quality time like i think there should be like a time like whether it's like when you wake up or before you go to bed like hey like there's no phone or yeah, nothing yeah. like that and we're gonna spend this time together well yeah so and this is probably because you're not single anymore so you're yeah. probably seeing some of this stuff right now where you didn't prior well i don't know you, but yeah i'm guessing it's changed a little yeah. bit for you most recently and so. don't, like one thing i'll add is like to just get good at this is to just constantly have like fucking notes of like mm-hmm. think about what do I just need to do tomorrow? Spit it all out yeah. and just go down and try to mm-hmm. knock those out and continuously do that. Yeah. I like it. So there's a lot of good life shit on this one. That's yeah. What, yeah. yeah. Anything There's else we want to wrap up? Um, uh, let's do one question and I'll right. tie it in. So okay. We'll tie it, it tie it, tie um, it together. Tie, tie a bow on it. All right. <laughs> and the final pick. This is so sick. I feel like I should be in it, like the draft commissioner here. Hold on, let me scroll up. We need yeah. Joe Johnson back for this. I know. <laughs> yeah, every, time was, I, every time you do that, it's all I think That was about. hilarious. Yeah, we do need to redo that. Um, all right, uh, last question in the 2023 roundtable draft Q&A. It is from Dan uh, Blase, I guess. I don't know how you say that, so shout out Dan. Um, he just says, no question, just want to shout out the Max River Supplements, best I've ever had. So I think we should end it <laughs> with is what's everyone's favorite supplement right now and what is your favorite arm exercise at the moment? Uh, favorite supplement is pre extreme. <laughs> <Extreme. laughs> actually, it's probably actually currently plant protein because I'm on the busy mm-hmm. diet, but I still take pre extreme. Mm-hmm. Um, and my favorite arm exercise is probably my favorite tricep currently <laughs> that we went through this morning because I felt absolutely yoked, which is 30 straight bar curls. 50 reps on the bicep machine, and then the incline curls with twist, eight reps, twist them 10, then four more, banger, Fuck yeah. five sets. Yeah. I love how you didn't give one exercise. You gave a fucking tricep. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> so, honestly, amazing. my arms are still blown up from it this yeah. morning, yeah. and I, I was mean, but, speaking But that's them. what you would expect from a true arm no, legend. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah you know I, mean? I, I don't know. Hey, I'm going to tell you this. My arms were always very lacking compared to my chest. Okay. But – having my chest kind of bang like hurt for a little while 
I could I like couldn't really you know focus on chest, so I had to focus more on arms. Now my chest is coming back. My arms and my chest are gonna match. Mm. Then I'm gonna be just a symmetrical legend. Is Yo, my plan. hold on, off the cuff, <laughs> off the cuff. Who's your Mount Rushmore of arm legends of arm gods? Oh, okay. I would say. Arnold is number one because yeah. his arms are fucking massive. Yeah, 22, <laughs> no 22 and a quarter. No doubt. Number two, Sergio Olivier. Mm. Triceps, crazy swole. Like fucking crazy swole. Um, number three, there's four on Mount Rushmore, right? Yeah. No, <laughs> I really paid attention in history class. Uh, I would say number three would be uh, probably Mike. No, Dave Draper. Shout out Dave Draper curls. Oh, yeah, yeah. His arms were like crazy. Were fucking great. But yeah, but he had some really cool exercises he did. So I fuck with Dave Draper. And I would say number four on the Mount Rushmore of arms, Larry Scott. He created the fucking preacher bench, basically. Mm. So that's like the Larry Scott superset was probably one of the ones that made the biggest difference in my bicep training when I started to understand that he did those like Remember, it was like six full, so many partials. You would do straight yeah. bar, regular bar, reverse curl. Like uh -huh. we, I ran those pretty, pretty hard back in the day. Um, so yeah, that's probably my Mount Rushmore um, of arms. So arm all right, I have a whole other perspective. You just gave a, you just gave like the real like Mount Rushmore. Um, my R Mount Rushmore of what truly I said, me, who, I give you body. Who, who yeah. I think of is number one's Arnold. Like that's yeah, 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 yeah So he's automatically yeah. in there. Um, two, gotta go with CT. Yeah, yeah, CT, yeah, yeah, yeah. the arm workout videos of like Amazing. Mount Bicepitus yeah, and like, yeah. <laughs> Grow Motherfucker. Like, I can the Grow Motherfucker grow. video is like yeah. that's all time, all shit. time, yeah. all time. Go, shit. go watch it if you haven't. Um, yeah. third, of course, I think the the free muscle like muscle farm workouts, I would have to put you up there. I think yeah. that's, Thanks, how, Cole. that's how that's how probably a lot of us know you is yeah. from the arm, arm workouts. Workout, so, yeah. I would put you the arm there. gauntlet of hugeness. And then, yeah. number four <laughs> is my inspiration behind Big Papa Shrugs. Is Big Papa uh, Pump. Scott Steiner? Scott Steiner, I knew it. Oh my gosh, that dude's <laughs> bicep peak is insane. Yeah. I just remember like looking at the kid. And I was it like, was a double, wasn't it? Didn't he have a split bicep? I think Maybe. so. I don't yeah. know what it was, but his fucking a gremlin. bicep he had a gremlin peak in his is insane. <laughs> is insane, and he has, dude. All right, so you'll love this. So I was because uh, recently I just getting back into it. his son's like now like a big star in WWE. Okay. So I've been look, I getting know back into it. He has a full on like P90X style like workout training split that he did. Okay. And he's nonchalantly like doing bench press with like 500 on there for of like course. reps. Like <laughs> doing like sets of like 10. He's, and he's doing all these supersets and shit like that. But he, he's doing like this shoulder press and he's got like fucking girls around there, like, you know, looking at yeah. his arms and shit. And he goes, Come here, mama. He goes, I need some sex appeal. So while he's doing the yep. how while he's doing the shoulder press, he has like a chick right there on him. Dude, it's fucking <laughs> hilarious. I was watching, I was like, this is amazing. Which is Cole's also like Cole's like like yeah, which, which all, which so all, that's where Hoochie Mama yeah, came from. Yeah, which all now, circles yeah. back to the Max for Muscle Super Set of the Week coming out of he's the he he had the quote of whenever Big Papa Pump Big Papa Pump comes to town, okay. all the Hoochie Mamas come around. There it is. So he's it's my four. What I named it. Yeah. Um, I feel like this could be a really good clip for Kyle to chop up, where it has like pictures of like all the people you just mentioned. That would be fucking hilarious. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What was but, the question again? Uh, favorite <laughs> supplement and arm exercise. Uh, right now it is the sour watermelon pre oh there I you fuck go with that it's mm. wet yeah 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 um, it like is wet ba I, the bag is sick too yeah, yeah, I'm told me to sick bag sick. shout out um and then arms uh i'm really into the german volume train right now oh you know? all right so i and i apply it kind of across the board to everything but i like doing um what is it uh just like 10 just regular dumbbell curls and then i'll go to hammer for the next one just going oh, back and forth yeah yeah it's fucking juicy danny trayvon yeah. Um, the amino recovery. Yeah, the totally. Arnold, Arnold Palmer right now. Mm. There it is. And then, um, favorite arm exercise my go to is always rep progression, like yeah, regular curl, pump. hammer curl, dumbbell. Yeah, yeah that's the go to. Some yeah. of my arm shit is is been into eternity, bro. It's been like rep yeah. progression. Rep progression. Is, is, the is, twenty. I did a twenty eight method knowledge bomb the other day. Oh, you did? Yeah, I brought that mm. back. I think I even shouted you out in it. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> that's, the old, that's the first thing I'm thinking about whenever I say that is the 28 method workout. Yeah. I probably attempted it a million times. I only think I actually finished it one time because it was like straight up like the. 28 method superset everything every exercise is 28 the method. whole workout and it was like one, and it was like seven sets the one <laughs> thing that fucked me up was the or i was totally shocked was the incline one time doing on the incline oh, bench so i was like yeah. i can't believe this is that's fucking hard and also you got like the ron landry up up on yeah, top of the graphic so just 
So Fuck. Joe Donnelly and I did. Uh, it's the only time I've ever worked out with him. He's one of Peter's friends. He played in the league. He's fucking super yoked up. He played like tight end at Syracuse. And we did a 28 method leg workout one time. And the squats were only with 135 and we were fucking die. And he's like 250. He looks like Peter's yoked. Yeah. And, and we had such respect for each other. We did the whole workout. He comes to the MP facility. He's like, what do you want to do today? I was like, and, and I wanted to see if he had a dog in him. So I'm like, oh, fucking legs. And he's like way bigger than me. And he's like, all right, fuck it. Let's go. So I'm like, well, I want you to try this method. And so I do the first set with in the super slow. And I'm trying to go real slow because I'm trying to really fuck with him. He handles it because he's a beast. But like, and then we did like walking lunge of like 70 or 80 pound dumb. Like it was a fucking dog sesh. And after we were just like, looked like we were both dead and like dapped each other up. And we've had like mutual respect each other for like 20 years, but it was the 28 method. We were, we started like getting after it with each other because we, you could see it's grueling if you use oh, the right fucking mm. weight. So right weight and the right, you actually go slow. Well, and everyone wants to come out of the hole fast. Whoa. Cause that's what you're used to. But when you come out in that slow motion. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Ah, let's wrap it yeah. up there. So charged. Uh, Danny yeah, did. Yeah, Danny doesn't charged. wrap it up anymore. All right. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I recommend <Yeah>. it. <laughs> All right. Finish off anyway. real quick. I've been really fucking with the plant protein. Also, Meg Mega D super slept on. Yeah, I need... Like, I need I need to take more Megadine. Also, the sleep. Yeah, Not gonna lie, dude. I, t I I have to take the sleep every night now. Oh yeah, like it, really it's made that. like that big of a difference, and I can notice the nights I do take it versus I don't. A one the, million percent. Dude, Dustin's on that train too. He fucking loves it. One sleep. million percent. Like take it like an hour, like right before you want to go to bed. You don't feel groggy when you wake up. No, I actually yeah. feel way I feel way better more when I wake up. Probably because you're getting deeper sleep. A hundred percent. Fuck yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I might need to clip that. That's a good sales, Cole. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, we good. Yeah. Well, All right. So. Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small arms, Danny, literally, at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Uh, brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com, Sam Adams Beer, and Manscape. Use We're code out. small arms. Yeah. Use the code small arms. We're out.